In the rugged beauty of the Colorado Rockies, at an elevation of 11,200 feet, lies the ghost town of Animus Forks, a relic of the bustling mining era of the late 19th century. Located approximately 12 miles northeast of the well-known tourist hub of Silverton, Animus Forks offers a unique and authentic experience for enthusiasts of ghost town exploration. Unlike many preserved ghost towns that have been transformed into tourist attractions, Animus Forks retains its original character, free from the trappings of commercialization. Abandoned since the early 1920s, this remote settlement stands as a testament to the transient nature of boom towns in the American West. The history of Animus Forks mirrors that of numerous mining communities of its time. Founded in the 1870s by prospectors drawn to the promise of riches hidden beneath the earth, the town experienced rapid growth as miners flocked to the area in search of their fortune. Soon, Animus Forks boasted a thriving community, complete with saloons and offices, general stores, boarding houses, and a bustling mill. During the harsh winters, many residents would temporarily migrate to the more hospital surroundings of Silverton, only to return to thaw in the spring. However, the boom proved to be short-lived, and by the mid-20th century, Animus Forks had succumbed to the fate that so many mining towns before it had. Today, under the custodianship of the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM, Animus Forks stands as a silent witness to the ebb and flow of fortunes in the Wild West. Visitors to Animus Forks can immerse themselves in the rich history and rugged beauty of the region while going through the Alpine Loop, which is a scenic 65-mile backcountry byway. Accessible primarily by four-wheel drive vehicles, this unpaved route offers a glimpse into the untamed wilderness that once served as the backdrop of the tumultuous lives of miners and pioneers. Surrounded by cascading waterfalls and mountain meadows and the occasional sighting of bighorn sheep, Animus Forks invites intrepid travelers to step back in time and explore the remnants of a bygone era in the heart of the Colorado Rockies. Our next one is Bannock, Montana. Bannock, Montana is a captivating ghost town and a relic of the frenzied gold rush, gold rush that gripped the American West in the mid-19th century. Revered as one of the finest preserved ghost towns in the state, Bannock beckons adventurers and history buffs and paranormal enthusiasts alike to explore its storied past and lingering mysteries. Dating back to its establishment in 1862 along the tranquil banks of Grasshopper Creek, Bannock his Bannock's history is steeped in tales of triumph, tragedy, and treachery. What began as a promising frontier settlement soon descended into a maelstrom of chaos, corruption, and violence. Unbeknownst to his uh, unsuspecting residents, the town's very own sheriff, Henry Plummer, moonlighted as a leader of a notorious gang of outlaws, using his position of authority to orchestrate a reign of terror across the region. The shadows of Bannock's tumultuous past still loom over its weathered facades and abandoned streets. Now designated as a state park and honored as a National Historic Landmark, the, the town stands as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit that they faced during this time. Among the many buildings that whisper tales of bygone days, Skinner Saloon stands as a haunting reminder of Bannock's darker chapters. It was here, beneath the gaze of the gallows, that Sheriff Plummer met his ultimate fate at the hands of vigilante justice. Legend has it that the echoes of his... Uh, Mids misdeeds still reverberate through the timbers of the old saloon and they linger in the chill of the night air. Adjacent to Skinner Saloon, the Hotel Mead casts its own spectral spell upon visitors with reports of explicit uh, cold spots, eerie sensation, and disembodied cries of unseen children echoing through its halls. Among the most enduring apparitions is that of Dorothy Dunn, a young girl who tragically met her demise in the depths of a nearby creek. Her ghost is said to wander the corridors of the hotel, forever trapped between worlds of the living and dead. Our next ghost town is Bodie, California. Nestled among the rugged terrain of the eastern Sierras, at an altitude surpassing 8,000 feet, lies the desolate yet captivating ghost town of Bodie, California. With its storied past and hauntingly preserved uh, remnants, Bodie stands as a testament to the fleeting fortunes and faded dreams of the West. Intriguingly, 
Bodie nearly achieved the distinction of being California's official state ghost town, only to face opposition from proponents from another contender, Calico. A legislative proposal in 2002 sparked a debate over which town truly embodied the essence of a ghostly relic. Unfortunately, both Bodie and Calico were bestowed with official titles, with Calico recognized as the state's official Silver Rush ghost town, and Bodie as its Gold Rush counterpart. The compromise ensured that each town received its due recognition, albeit with distinct uh, historical narratives. What sets Bodie apart is its unassuming authenticity. Unlike its counterpart, Calico, which transformed into a living history attraction, Bodie embraced its state of arrested decay. Frozen in time, the town's roughly hundred uh, remaining structures bear the scars of neglect and abandonment preserved in their weathered and worn state. Visitors are urged to refrain from disturbing the relics, allowing Bodhi to maintain its eerie ambiance and historical integrity. Accessible via a rugged dirt road, Bodhi offers a glimpse into a bygone era of a rowdy frontier life and booming prosperity. During its zenith in the early 1880s, Bodhi teemed with activity of boasting a population of nearly 10,000 people, a bustling hub of commerce and vice the town boasted a red light district, a vibrant Chinatown, and a saloon on practically every corner. Yet, Bodhi's fortunes were fleeting as they were grand. Ravaged by fires and beset by economic decline, the town entered a downward spiral from which it never fully recovered. By the 1920s, its population dwindled to a mere fraction of its, of its former glory, and by 1942, Bodhi was all but abandoned, its streets echoing with the whispers of the bygone era. Today, Bodhi's sole inhabitants are the dedicated park rangers who safeguard its legacy, offering guided tours that unveil the secrets of this genuine California ghost town. With its haunting beauty and poignant uh, history, Bodhi continues to captivate visitors, serving as a reminder of the relentless passages of time and the transient nature of human endeavor in the vast expanse of our favorite American West. That does lead us to its counterpart, which is Calico, California. Which is nestled in the Mojave Desert, Calico um, stands as a testament to the allure of the Old West. Founded as a silver mining outpost in 1881, this restored town offers a, uh, visitors a glimpse into the rugged past of the American frontier, albeit with a touch of modern day flair. The story of Calico is as uh, intriguing as it is unique. In the 1950s, the entire town was purchased by a man named Walter Knott, a visionary entrepreneur who sought to preserve its heritage for future generations. Knott, renowned for his family's berry farm in Orange uh, County, embarked on a mission to transform Calico into a replica ghost town, drawing inspiration from the story tales of the Old West. What emerged from Knott's endeavors was a charming amalgamation of history and entertainment, uh, reminiscent of a bygone era, yet distinctly accessible to more modern audiences. While some may liken Calico to uh, like a Hollywood backlot, its roots run deeper than just uh, like what's on the surface level. Many of the town's original adobe and wood structures, painstakingly restored by Knott himself, still stand, stand proudly amidst the desert landscape. From the rustic saloons and the bustling mercantile, the quaint post office, Calico exudes an authenticity that um, kind of pays homage to its original uh, roadside attraction. Despite its evolution in uh, a San Bernardino County Park, Calico remains true to its historical roots, offering visitors a chance to step back in time and experience the frontier spirit firsthand. While some buildings may not be authentic looking additions, the essence of Calico lies in the commitment of preserving the legacy of our favorite Old West. For those seeking a more immersive uh, ghost town experience, Calico offers a wealth of activities to delight and entertain. From gold panning to scenic excursions aboard a vintage narrow gauge railway, um, visitors can immerse themselves in the sights of uh, and sounds of a bygone era. And for the more adventurous souls, that's not me, <laughs> uh, brave enough to venture into the depths of the Silver King mine, um, you can do so at your own risk. Our next is Rhyolite, Nevada. Rhyolite, Nevada is on the fringes of Death Valley National Park. 
Amid the rugged expanse of Nevada's Bullfrog Hills, this is a ghost town called Rhyolite. I think I'm pronouncing it that. Rhyolite. Um, a testament to the ebbs and flows. Again, we're seeing this in many of these towns. It goes up and then it crashes. It goes up and it crashes. Um, and this is no different. There's a rise and fall of boom and bust. Um, but unlike many gold rust settlements that faded into obscurity before reaching their full potential, Rhyolite emerged as a bustling metropolis during its heyday around 1907 to 1908. Fueled by the promise of riches hidden beneath the earth, the town swelled to a population of nearly 5,000 people, with the majority toiling away in the nearby Montgomery Shoshone mine. What sets Rhyolite apart is not just its size, but also the rapidity with which it rose and fell. Despite boasting amenities such as an opera house and other signs of prosperity, the town's fortunes took a swift downturn. In 1911, a mere seven years after its establishment, the, Shoshone, the Montgomery Shoshone Mine shuttered its operation, sending shopways through the community. Within a few years, the post office closed its doors, the electricity was cut off, and by 1920, Rylite's population had dwindled to almost zero. Yet, Rylite refused to fade quietly into oblivion. In the 1920s, the abandoned town found a new life as a popular filming location, attracting filmmakers drawn to its haunting beauty in, uh, and its ruins. Today, it's under the custodianship of Bureau of Land Management, again, or BLM. Uh, Rhyolite remains a testament to the enduring legacy of the silver screen, its crumbling facades serving as a backdrop for the countless cinematic adventures. Our next town is Ruby, Arizona. While Arizona boasts a diverse array of ghost towns uh, and ghost town experiences from kitschy frontier reconstructions to eerie mining outposts turned artist havens, Ruby stands as more of a testament to the state's rich and varied history. Located approximately 70 miles southeast of Tucson near the Mexican border with the expansive uh, Coronado National Forest, Ruby beckons adventurers to explore its hauntingly preserved remnants. Once a thriving mining camp, Ruby's story is as intriguing as it is tragic, marked by tales of prosperity, violence, and eventual abandonment. In the early 1920s, Ruby gained notoriety as a site of a series of bloody double homicides, casting a shadow over its once bustling streets. Despite decades of prosperity, the town met its demise in 1941, fading into obscurity as the residents moved on and nature began to reclaim the land. Fenced off by private owners and inaccessible to the public, Ruby languished in silence until the late 1960s when it was unexpectedly colonized by a group of intrepid hippies seeking refuge from mainstream society. Today, under the stewardship of the nonprofit Ruby Mines Restoration Project, Ruby offers visitors a glimpse into the stored past. Managed uh, visiting hours, albeit subject to an entry fee, allow explorers to wander among the weathered buildings that stand still as a silent witness to the town's former glory. From the rustic jailhouse to the weather-beaten school, each structure tells a tale of resilience and perseverance in the face of adversity. Accessing Ruby is no small feat. With the Border Patrol activity and a bustling colony of Mexican free-tailed bats deterring all but the most determined travelers, um, some can dare to venture off the beaten path. It does promise a rewarding experience that's steeped in history and adventure and kind of brings you back into the time of the Old West. Our next town is a town located in Colorado, specifically in the Colorado Sawich Range. It's a town called St. Elmo, Colorado. It's renowned as one of the Centennial State's most impeccably preserved gold rush ghost towns. St. Elmo exudes an irresistible charm that captivates visitors from far and wide. While some quibble over the fact that St. Elmo isn't entirely abandoned, its ramshackle beauty and nostalgic allure are undeniable. Indeed, to wander its weathered streets is a step back in time, while the echoes of bygone days still linger um, amongst the rusting relics. It was originally founded in 1880 under the name Forest City, St. Elmo, uh, thriving as a bustling mining outpost until the early 1920s, when its fortunes began to wane. Legend has it that the town's decline accelerated when the last train made its solemn departure in 1922, carrying away many of the remaining inhabitants who sought greener pastures elsewhere. By the early 1950s, even the once vital lifeline of the mail service had ceased. 
its postmaster succumbing to the passage of time. And in 1958, uh, St. Elmo uh, bid farewell to its last colorful character, Annabelle or Dirty Andy Stark as she departed for a nursing home, leaving behind a legacy of tales and whispers that still echo through the streets. Today, a handful of businesses dot the landscape, including a quaint general store that caters to the needs of curious tourists and intrepid ATV enthusiasts uh, alike. Yet amidst the uh, abandoned buildings, there lingers a sense of uh, anticipation, as if spirits of the past still walk among us. Indeed, sightings of Dirty Annie herself are rumored to occur from time to time and spectral reminder of the town's story past. Nestled along the remote reaches of the Continental Divide National Scenic Trail, amidst the rugged beauty of Wyoming's wilderness, lies the historic enclave of South Pass City. Revered as one of the state's uh, premier Old West ghost towns, South Pass City beckons adventurers to embark on a journey through time. As a favorite pit stop for weary hikers traversing the Continental Divide, South Pass City offers a unique blend of authenticity and family-friendly frontier fun. I had to take a second, that was hard to see. <laughs> its historic uh, cove, lovingly preserved as the South Pass City State Historic Site, presents visitors with a captivating view of a bygone uh, day, where abandoned buildings stand as silent witnesses to the town's tumultuous past. Yet, amidst the rustic charm and deserted streets, visitors can partake in activities such as gold panning, adding a touch of adventure to their exploration of their historic visit. Founded in 1867, amidst the frenzy of the major gold rush at the nearby Carissa Mine, South Pass City followed the classic trajectory of all the towns we've mentioned and other 19th century boomtowns. Rapid expansion was soon followed by a period of decline punctuated by fleeting moments of prosperity that failed to, respo- to restore the town to its former glory. Uh, and despite the challenges of harsh weather and hard living, a resilient population preserved, clinging to the promise of a better tomorrow. However, South Pass City's significance transcends its existence as a mining outpost. In 1869, the town made history when William H. Bright, a local saloon owner and representative in Wyoming's first territorial legislature, Uh, introduced a groundbreaking women's suffrage clause to the territorial constitution. This visionary act laid the foundation for Wyoming to to become the first U.S. territory to grant women the right to vote, making a pivotal moment in the fight for gender equality. In 1870, South Pass City cemented itself in American history once again with the appointment of Esther Hobart uh, Morris as Justice of the Peace, making her the first woman to hold political office in the United States. Despite facing uh, opposition from her frequently inebriated husband, Morris uh, courageously upheld the principles of justice and equality, leaving her mark on American democracy. Today, South Pass City stands as a testament to the resilience and pioneering spirit of the men and women who forged a life amidst harsh realities of the frontier, specifically the frontier in Wyoming. It's pretty rough. Um, As visitors wander its streets and explore its abandoned buildings, they are invited to reflect on the legacy of this historic site where the dreams of gold seekers mingled with the aspirations of those who dared to challenge the status quo. Set in the sun-scorched expanses of this southeastern Arizona area lies a trio of forgotten treasures, Cortland, Pierce, and Gleason, Arizona. While their neighbor Tombstone may boast a vibrant pulse and a bustling community, these abandoned boom towns stand as silent witnesses to the era of the Wild West, where the dreams of fortune seekers collided with the harsh realities of frontier life. As a stop along the Arizona Ghost Town Trail, Gleason beckons adventurers uh, to explore its picturesque streets and refurbished landmarks. Here, amidst the crumbling remnants of a once thriving mining settlement, visitors can catch a glimpse of history frozen in time. Gleason's iconic refurbished jail stands as a testament to the town's storied past, offering a glimpse into the rough and tumble world of the Old West. Meanwhile, a short drive away, Pierce awaits with its general store and church listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Here, in the faded facades and weathered relics, visitors can trace the footsteps of those who once called this frontier outpost home, their spirits lingering amidst the dust and desert winds. And then there's Cortland, the most desolate and dilapidated of the trio, where time seems to stand still 
uh, amidst the crumbling ruins of the once thriving community. Here, amidst the echoes of the forgotten past, visitors can immerse themselves in the eerie silence of abandoned streets where nature has reclaimed what was once hers. Together, these three ghost towns offer a glimpse into the rugged beauty and untamed spirit of the American West, where dreams of fortune seekers again collide with frontier life. As visitors wander through the deserted streets and weathered buildings, they are invited to ponder the passage of time and the enduring legacy of those who dared carve a life amidst the unforgiving wilderness. So come wander the Arizona Ghost Town Trail and discover the untold stories hidden within the crumbling ruins of Cortland, Pierce, and Gleason. <laughs>